Okay, so in this video, we will give an intuitive proof of the factor theorem, and to illustrate the idea, we will first consider an example. So say we have 5x cubed minus 8x squared plus 3x minus 4, and that we divide this polynomial by x minus 2. So let's perform this long division. So we can use x to eliminate 5x cubed by choosing as a multiple 5x squared. We multiply x minus 2 by 5x squared. We get 5x cubed, negative 10x squared. We subtract both polynomials. These two cancel. Negative 8, positive 10 is positive 2. So 2x squared and then 3x minus 0, 3x, negative 4 minus 0, negative 4. We can keep going, we can eliminate the 2x squared using x again by adding up 2x, multiply 2x by x minus 2, gives us 2x squared minus 4x. We subtract both polynomials, these two cancel, 3x negative negative, so positive 4x, 7x, negative 4 minus 0, negative 4, and we can keep going, we can eliminate the 7x using x again, so this time plus 7, so 7 times x minus 2, 7x minus 14, we subtract, 7x cancels, and we're left with negative 4, positive 14, positive 10. And there's no longer any x's, so now this puts the stop to our long division. But notice that this is interesting. We do end up with a remainder, but a constant remainder. And this is not a fluke, right? Think about m changing this polynomial for any other polynomial. The end result would have to be, in the worst case, a constant remainder. Since we are dividing a polynomial by a linear polynomial, where the only power of x is 1, this means that whatever powers of x there are in the first polynomial, we can use the single x to eliminate each power of x. So by dividing a polynomial by a linear polynomial, where the only x term is x to the 1, in the worst case, out of this long division, if there is a remainder, it will be a constant remainder. So let's now look at this, but in slightly more general terms. Suppose that we call this polynomial f of x, so any polynomial f of x, and we divide this polynomial by x minus some number a. Well, the argument here works just the same. Whatever powers of x there are in f of x, we can use systematically x to eliminate every single one of them. So in the long division, at the very end, if there is a remainder, there cannot be any power of x left over, so worst case, it will be a constant remainder. And we will have here some quotient, say q of x. And this is the remainder, r of x, but it has to be a constant. So think of what this implies. Let's rewrite the result of this long division. So this will tell us that f of x is equal to x minus a times the quotient, q of x, plus possibly a remainder. But again, since we are dividing f of x by a linear polynomial, the remainder, if there is one, has to be a constant. Now this equality has to be true for all values of x, so we can replace x by any number of our choice. Let's replace x by a. So f of a equals a minus a times q of a plus c, as c is a constant, well, we have again on the left f of a, but a minus a is 0, 
So we have 0 times q of a plus c. But whatever the value of q at a is, once multiplied by 0, the whole thing is 0. So we're left with, on the right, simply the constant remainder c. So look at this. Not only is c a constant, but it's not any constant. It is the value of the polynomial at x equals 8. So we can now replace. So we have that f of x must be equal to x minus 8 times the quotient q of x plus the constant remainder, which happens to be simply f of a. So this is the result in general of a long division of f of x by x minus 8. If there is a remainder, it is a constant remainder, and it happens to be the value of the polynomial at x equals 8. And with this, we can now easily prove the factor theorem, right? If f of a happens to be 0, think of the implication. If this is the case, the implication is that f of x has to be x minus 8 times q of x plus nothing else, as the remainder is 0. Which means if f of a is 0, x minus a times q of x is f of x, therefore x minus a is a factor of f of x. And this is exactly the statement of the factor theorem. which sometimes is also called the zero theorem. And we can now write the statement. If we have a polynomial, f, that is equal to zero at x equals a, then automatically x minus the value of the zero is a factor of the polynomial f of x. In other words, f of x is equal to x minus a times some other polynomial. And that's it.